Up is Sekith, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. So I've been neglecting talking to my campmates at all really, so I'm gonna do that this time. Just go through all of their dialogues that I haven't read up on yet. Oh, they're here now, okay. Let's talk to them. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Open your mind to that sensation. Your mind joins with Shadow Hearts. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. Remember that it is a common right among Saluna's followers to send their children off into the woods to find their way home. Perhaps this time it had gone awry. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young. Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My... Parents, I need to save them. Oh, hell. your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair, but be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come, but not yet forearmed. The Spear of Night, I thought that was cast into the Shadowfell. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough, but I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <sighs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. 
What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. She gave us back Saloon's... Oh, it's Saloon's Spear of Night now. All right, let's equip it. You saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? Why does Karlak approve? I didn't choose anything. He seems to be a servant of Bane as Ketherick served Merkel. Who knows what powers he's gained since you knew him. I'd never have protected a Baneite even a decade ago. I looked after that fucker with my life. I trusted him. He gave me away to Zariel without a second thought. And now he's looking to ruin the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him. Careful, Karlak, you're burning up. You bet your ass I am. And I won't stop till that fucker is dead. I can feel it. The engine. It's getting hotter, louder. It's going to blow if we don't find another way to fix it. You know, Zariel may have put the fucking thing in, but Gortash gave her the go-ahead. You expect this shit from devils, but not from the people you care about. Let's get to the city. Got business there I'm highly fucking keen to attend to. Oh, so she was with Gortash before she became Zariel's servant. Pity about Halsin. I was getting used to having an extra strong around. He smelled nice too. Like, outside. How did you end up with such a contraption in your chest? The year, ten air. The place, sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero, Karlak, a knock-kneed delinquent from the outer city with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. Worked for a guy I respected. A lot. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. But to war. I learned quick how to stay alive. And the engine served me when it came to killing devils. Ten years of that. The stories I could tell. Go on then, tell them. I'll meet out the best ones bit by bit, so you always have a reason to keep me around. Clever, right? In your expert opinion, what's the best way to kill a devil? Depends on the type. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. What they don't love is getting their bombs lobbed right back in their faces. Demons, on the other hand, every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever think you've got them typed out. Sharp instincts, sharp weapons, and a knack for improvisation. That's the only way to survive them. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? It sounds like all we need to fix your engine is some infernal iron. Let's hope Damon is as good as he seems. Once my engine's handled, I can focus on more important matters. Tadpoles, cults, frosty pints. What does that infernal engine do to you? It gives me energy. Power. But you've seen it in action. Very hard to control. If I'm excited at all, angry, nervous, delighted, enticed, I burn hot. Hot enough to burn anyone who gets close. What's that been like? Agonizing. God's what I wouldn't give for a hug. A pat. Anything. You've never met anyone so desperate for a hug as this one right here. Pathetic, perhaps, but true. It's my lot to bear, and I bear it badly. Oh well. Can't have it all, can you? Not today, at least. We've got some infernal metal. What should we do with it? Yes! We need to go find Damon. I'm going to get a hug soon. You and Mizora seem to know each other. How? We were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. 
In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. She favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. Do you think she'll keep coming after you? I don't know. You think she'd have more important things to do? Devils and their pride. I can see why you were so keen to escape. <sighs> no kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. <laughs> it had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. So you had a friend in Avernus you never said. You saw the extent of Flo's friendship. She'll lend you a hand, long as she can crush your spirit while she's at it. I knew never to let my guard down around her. But she always made me laugh, even when I least wanted to. If she'd been completely different from who she was, we might have been real friends. Pity, sounds like she meant something to you in whatever small way. Yes, she did. Much as it makes me want to puke to admit it. Ugh, devils, you know. Fucking devils. They really screw with you, don't they? So about our tadpole powers. You really did it, huh? Not worried about adding more lithid into the mix? Well, what can I say? You look fine. Smell fine. Seem fine. And yet... You're more mind flayer than ever. Hope you don't expect me to follow your lead in this. It's your choice, but I think the tadpoles make me stronger. Do they? I'm not sure either of us can say one way or the other. We don't know what the costs might be just yet. We might be facing a cult more powerful than we know. We need all the help we can get. An 18? Nice. How do you do that? Always making sense when I least want you to. <sighs> Fine. I'll keep an open mind, all right? I can promise that much. Now, are we done here? All right, that's Karlak down. Gods be damned. With that parasite in his brain, father could wreak untold havoc in the Absolute's name. Should Baldur's Gate fall to the Absolute, every one of the coast cities will be ripe for the plucking. We're not just fighting for our cure. We're fighting for my father. We're fighting for the gate. We're fighting for all of Faerun. Oh yeah, Ravenguard is his father. I forgot. The Absolute's cult has Ravenguard. Where will they take him? Worms Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's army's on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them. What do you know about Gortash and Orin? Orin? I'd never heard tell of. But Gortash I know. Or know of, more precisely. A self-styled strategic advisor to Baldur's Gate's peers. A bit player with dreams of a leading role, the way Father told it. He had no use for Gortash. And even less for his advice. I don't remember much beyond that. But where these Chosen are concerned, I have a suspicion we're about to know more than we'd like. Mazura said you can say what led you to your pact in exile. It's time I know the whole truth. So the dialogue bugged out. Will says yes, but first a question, if your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? Uh, I'll give my life if it meant keeping the residents safe. As would I. And more. I was 17. Father. Older Ravenguard had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elterel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. The Cult of the Dragon, a fractured religion. Some believers hold that undead dragons will inherit the world. Others worship the dragon goddess Tiamat and intend to summon her to Faerun. The Cult of the Dragon had infiltrated Baldur's Gate? To what end? To conjure the Dragon Queen and lay waste to Baldur's Gate. A ten day after father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill, the queen of chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, 
yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened. In the looming shadow of the mount, five groups of five figures each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it, she whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. Surely Mazora doesn't care about Baldur's Gate. Why would she want to save it? She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zarya. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. And what about your father, the Grand Duke? He returned to an unsuspecting city and a wayward son with a smirking devil at his side. I tried to tell him the truth, but my mouth couldn't form the words. I'd led him to the battlefield, but Mazora had swept it clean. After, he said only one word. Go. So I did. Sacrificing your soul to save the city was a brave thing to do. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, all that remained were five grayed orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound, and my lips were sealed. Is that how you lost your eye in the battle with the Cult of the Dragon? It is. The one scar I ever bore of it. Mizora replaced it with a sending stone. She uses it to track my location and speak from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world or the depths of the lower dark, and still never shake her. You must have been furious at your father for throwing you out of the city. No, never. He did the only thing he could. In his eyes, I invited a devil into our midst. I was a fool at best, a traitor at worst, and Grand Duke Ravenguard suffers neither. Do you miss your father? More than you know. The better question is, did he ever miss me? If he did, he missed the Will Ravenguard he once knew, not the hell-touched warlock he returned to. How does it feel like to be a devil? It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck. Not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? I see the blade of frontiers no more, no less. <laughs> it's because you know the heart lurking under the horns. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters. Keep them safe. And one day they will see... The Blade of Frontiers again. What do you think of the illicit potential the Dream Visitors spoke of? I think that unknowable powers come with unknowable consequences. I can't say I'm not curious. But once you've taken a lithid by the Talon, there's no telling how deep into the abyss it might drag you. You've seen how dangerous these absolute cultists are. We need the extra help. I'm more than a bit wary, I admit. Still, I am the Frontier's avowed protector. New dangers require new skills to vanquish them. 
If the tadpole must be my curse, then let the powers it grants me be the Sword Coast's blessing. I will consume what I must to make it so. I'd like to talk about Elminster's visit. Quite an explosive secret to keep to yourself, Gale. Listen, Gale. I might invoke the triad from time to time, appeal to Helm, but I'm no man of faith. Not like you. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death among countless others to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big bomb be damned. You've got everything you need to defeat the absolute already. Talent, nerve, and powerful allies at your side. Just some food for thought. I can't blame Halsin for leaving. We could have, should have done more for him and for the cursed lands. They may never again feel the breath of life on them. What a shame. Oh, damn. Maybe I could have done more for the Emerald Grove. Oh, well. After she betrayed Shara Shadowheart, does not seem like she wants to talk to me for now. Let's talk to Astarion. Just like that hulking bear to stomp off in a half. I swear, druids care more about the plants of this land than the people. Tell me about your history. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now... I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. How does someone become a vampire exactly? It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. And once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. In theory? People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. So about you biting me. I've already apologized. What more do you want? I need to know how we'll feed you in the future. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons. Teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. All right, but I'll be watching. Excellent. Now, shall we go? I'm already feeling a little peckish. I never asked, are you Casador's only spawn? Or are there others like you? <laughs> Casador, Syed Seven spawn. Me and my six brothers and sisters. I was one of his first. Some of the others came years later. He was a monster to us all but did take special pleasure in my pain he said my screams sounded sweetest and now that i'm gone i, I don't know i pity the other six hmm, maybe we can rescue them to boulder's gate if we're to be free of this parasite, we must slay these chosen and their captive brain. Oh, she has nothing to say. After I rejected her, I guess she doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Let's talk to Volo. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. What do you know about mind flayers? Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. 
The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. I fought one of them. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. Not only have I encountered a mind flare, I've killed one. That, that can't be. I was captured by mind flares before. I'm lucky to be alive. You're mad. But tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? I have, and the mind flares infected me with a parasite. That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If only your disbelief could alter facts. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Examine me, find out yourself. Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, dear sweet gods! I want to get rid of this thing by any means necessary. If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Little issue? Has your research turned up anything that might help with this parasite problem? Not yet, I'm afraid, but my expectations are very, very high. Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. I would not linger in this land over long, but whatever your business, I will aid you if I can. You have enough fine young folk to run around and do your bidding. Come back when they need a rest. Jahira's in camp now, but she doesn't really have anything to say. And I can't talk to Arabella, it seems. Suck to others. now a bosom companion. Take care that thou art not distracted on my quest, seeking the comforts of the flesh. Excuse me? Recall that in time, all becomes dust and bone. Let's go talk to Shadowheart one last time and see if she has anything new. Did you want something? If not, I'm perfectly happy to just gaze upon you a while. Now she just has repeatable dialogues. I think we talked to everyone important. Oh, I forgot to talk to the pets. Dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. Give that here. Is that gold? He gives in and surrenders his find to you. A potion of healing. Thank you. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. Here. Where's the ball? Fetch, boy. Oh, even the owlbear is fetching now. Look the cub over. Camp life seems to suit the young owl there. His coat of feathers seems fuller. His eyes look bright and inquisitive. Pet him. Now let's finally end the day. I've been lied to. My whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive, and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. You've been forced to live a lie. At least now the truth is starting to reveal itself. Indeed. But the truth may yet prove painful. Who knows what Shah still keeps from me. We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see too. And what's that? You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. 